This video will introduce you to the vertical milling machine. The different parts of the vertical mill include the base, the knee that moves up and down, the column that supports everything from the head, the table, the knee, the motor, the motor switch for forward and reverse, just like the drill press, the head, the variable speed control, which you should never turn unless the motor is running, the digital readout, sometimes abbreviated as DRO, the quill, which is the part that moves up and down, just like the drill press, and the spindle, the part that moves within the quill, rotates and holds your tools. The table, which moves in the x-axis, feed handles on opposite ends of, of the table, the power feed that drives the x-axis, and the traverse feed handle, which moves the table in the y direction. On the right hand side of the head, you have the back gear lever for changing into high or low speed, the speed change hand wheel, which you saw on the other screen. Once again, only turn this while the motor is running. The quill feed engage lever, the quill feed engage lever, if you're not using it, should always be in the disengage position. The quill feed handle, which works the same as the drill press. The micrometer adjusting nut, or sometimes called the quill stop. The T-axis tilt nut, which allows you to tilt the head in the X-axis. On the left-hand side of the head, you have the motor switch for moving forward and reverse. The spindle brake for stopping the spindle and holding it in place while you tighten tools into the quill. The quill feed selector, which has three speeds, high, medium, and low. The quill feed direction control, which pushed in or out will allow the quill to feed up or down. Then the quill feed engage lever, which you will engage that when you are power feeding the quill, most often when boring. And at last, the y-axis tilt nut, which will tilt the entire head in the y-axis. And at both ends of the table, the knee and on the traverse feed handle, you have graduated collars so you can control the distance that you move into thousands of an inch. To start with, let's name the basic parts of the machine. This part that moves up and down is the knee. It moves up and down using this handle. You have a table that moves in the y-axis and in the x-axis. The table moves it in the z-axis as well as the quill which works very similarly to the drill press moving up and down in the z-axis. Now on the head you have some important things to remember. Your quill feed disengage lever is here. Your high and low gear shift is here. Your quill engage, quill feed engage is here. And on this side you have your quill feed speed selector. You have a high, medium, and a low setting. You turn the machine on and off using this switch and stop it using this brake. When you wish to change speeds, whether in high or low gear, you turn this handle which works this dial faster or slower. Never under any circumstances are you to move this lever while the machine, while the motor is off.
Now, although it says forward and reverse on the switch, you need to ignore those. Your tool should always, or almost always, move in a clockwise rotation. So, when you turn it on in high speed, you move this one to the forward direction. But when you shift to low speed, that changes the gears, and now forward is in the reverse position. Sometimes, like this particular one, it's very difficult to get it in high speed after you've been in low gear. You find that sweet spot, and it kicks in. If, for some reason, you put it in low gear, you turn it on, change it back and you haven't got it engaged, it'll make a horrible sound like this. And everyone will point a finger and laugh at you because you were grinding the gears. So, if it's fully engaged, it'll make a nice smooth swirling sound. This has a collet in it already, but we're going to remove that collet. Reaching up here, there's a three-quarter inch hex nut or hex bolt on the end of this draw bar. You loosen it up and the collet will fall out. We're going to install a drill chuck. There's a keyway on the side of the drill chuck, and there's a keyway inside the head of the spindle. So you find that keyway just by rotating it, it will fall in place, push it all the way up, and then screw the threads down by hand. It takes a little, a little while. Once you've got them all the way down, put your box in on the end of the draw bar. Using the brake, tighten it, leave your box end on the draw bar, draw it back again, hold the brake again, and tighten it, and maybe a third time. You want to make sure that that's good and tight before you start anything. If, you're, if your tool is loose, whether it's a drill chuck or a collet holding an end mill or a, a, a carbide cutter, it'll come loose, you'll get a bad finish, and it could actually fall out and damage the machine, hurt you. So you don't want to have anything come loose. Make sure it's good and tight when you're working on this. This is the gear change lever for low speed. You push in, it's spring loaded, push in, move it around, and it'll drop in place. Give it a spin, grab hold of the spindle, give it a spin, make sure that it's in place. Then you can engage. What you saw me doing from a distance now, you try to get this to fall into place. Once it does, give it a little push. Make sure it feels like it's in place. This is the quill feed engage lever. Right now it is in the disengage position. To engage your quill feed, make sure that your Spindle is stopped. Move it once again. Give it a little twist to make sure it falls into gear. This controls your quill feed direction. So when you're in high speed, 
and you're moving forward. There it's in reverse, it's moving up. You push it in. When it engages, it will move down. Once you, this is the quill engage, feed engage lever. You engage the quill feed. You'll notice that the handle is moving down on its own. When it reach, reaches the bottom where the stop is, it will disengage. Set your quill stop right back here. I'll show you that in a second. That disengages it. This is your quill stop. So once again, we engage the motor. You see the quill feed is engaged down. We can move that up. Say we want it to stop right at one inch. Once it hits the quill stop, it disengages and your quill is free. With this lever you can select either low speed, medium speed, or, or high speed. This is a close-up of your quill stop. You can set it, you have a scale on this side and a graduated scale on this one where you can move it down each rotation is 50 thousandths. So if you have, if you can get it to stop on a part and you want to move it down a hundred thousandths you can touch off on your part, bring the knee up to your part, then you can move this down two full turns. And if you like, you can use this locking nut, spin it up to lock it in place. And that way, you will only engage that hundred thousandths. Now you'll notice on this machine, not only does it have an X and a Y axis, but a Z axis. This Z axis works solely on the quill. There is no digital readout on the knee. So this Z axis, and that's typical of any of these that have z-axis digital readouts it's only it only applies to the quill and to reset these it's simple putting pushing the button there's your zero there's your zero and you have two what it calls absolute or incremental honestly I just think of it as two separate zeros so you can reset your zeros at all three and when you change from absolute to incremental it does not change and that way if you're in you've zeroed at this point and you want to move over an inch so you move over an inch There you've moved over one inch. If you zero there and you want to move another inch, you can zero there. Then you can change and see that you've moved two inches. This would be your absolute movement. The other two one-inch movements would be your incremental movements. 